And so the argument remains with the ministry insisting on continuing with the concessioning plans, which some of the concessionaires say they are in support of. I support concessioning. I want to be on record as doing that. But I do not support the way the ministry is trying to do it. The ministry cannot be the one to do the concessioning. It's an interested party. It should be given out to a body that can look at issues objectively, create the parameters objectively. That is also going to be helpful for the ministry because nobody is going to wake up three, four years down the line and say, oh, I'm not the new minister. What that minister did, it was in furtherance of his personal interest. I'm a new minister. I want to do things differently. Unfortunately, this type of argument has been recorded in the transaction involving a Jakuta steel mill located in Kogi State. After years of stagnation, the federal government has dismantled a Jakuta steel mill and the Nigeria iron ore mining. The government has signed a modified concession agreement between the Nigeria Iron Ore Mining and the Global Steel Holdings Limited. What we have succeeded in doing uh, with the renegotiated contract is first take back Agile Kuta Steel Plant. The priority of this government and the focus of the president when he campaigned to Nigerians was that we were going to resuscitate a Jalkuta steel plant. And we've been locked down in this endless arbitration for the last eight years, preventing that particular promise that the president made to Nigerians to come to fruition. And with all of our best efforts, legal, political, uh, we clearly came to the conclusion that there was no other way we could have accomplished that without giving something uh, that would enable us to do so. Don't forget, this was a contract that was revoked and there was clearly a breach on the part of the Nigerian government when it revoked the contract. But once again, the process of this arrangement comes into questioning with the Bureau of Public Enterprises claiming that it was not involved. Uh, there must be an approval from the NCP and the secretariat of the NCP is the BPE and virtually there is no, in, there is no NCP, it's not inaugurated by the president, which he should have done if you want to engage any exercise on privatization, if you want to get himself engaged into anything to do with concession. There are those agencies that they need to be in place so that to ease the process and to ensure adherence to the rule of law. While the issue with the Jakuta steel mill is still pending, the news of concessioning the Nigerian Railway Corporation has filled the media. The process is to be led by a steering committee for the concessioning of eastern and western lines. Their mandate, according to the Vice President, Yemi Shibajo, is to, among other things, create a one-stop shop for the concession, fast-track the process, and overcome the bureaucratic bottlenecks associated with the process. The Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotimi Amichi, has said that concessioning the rail subsector would, among other benefits, attract about $3 billion to the country. The government had earlier in the year announced plans to concession the Port Harcourt, Medugri, and Lagos Kano lines to United States conglomerate General Electric. Meanwhile, the union of workers with about 10,000 members in the subsector called for caution as the government takes steps towards the concessioning. By the GE, whose area of comparative specialty is manufacturing of rolling stocks like locomotive engines, wagons, and coaching facilities, and never known to have run any railway outfit. This notwithstanding, the inventory of Nigerian Railway as directed by the federal government has been handed down to the, concession, to the concessionaire through its transaction advisor. How does that substitute for recommended high power technical valuation panel that will be independent of those aspiring to participate in the concession deal? The workers say they have not been satisfied with the level of work in the subsector for a long time. The, the legislative or the legal recognition to provide tools and facilities for them to work with. The kind of Nigerian railway we have is the type that the federal government of Nigeria, that is still the owner up to this moment and now, 
should be busy equipping and equipping and equipping all of the time. But because the past governments, particularly the army government, have chosen, for reasons best known to them, to neglect continued investment into Nigerian railway. And that is what was mainly responsible for the comatose, almost moribund state of the Nigerian railway. And for God's sake, the Nigerian, war and the Nigerian railway workers do not, you will agree with me, do not have any, any power to improve on the asset base, on the facilities with which Nigerian railway will generate very good and dependable rail transport services to the commuting public. And this is why it is going to be unfair for anybody to be blaming Nigerian railway for workers for the present uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, situation and inadequacies of the Nigerian railway. In fact, let me, capture, let me capture it in this expression. Nigerian railway is exactly the kind of Nigerian railway that the Nigerian state can afford to give Nigerian people. And that is why we cannot have this kind of Nigerian railway in American space. We cannot have this kind of Nigerian railway in, in, in French space, in other climes where they are doing the right thing. So this is just a very clear explanation of it. The workers are, of course, not in any way supposed to be responsible for equipping themselves to carry railway forward. They insist that if the government sees concessioning as a solution to ineffective performance, then they are in support. However, they demand for their benefits. Nigerian railway workers have signed to an irreversible uh, you know, work agreement that they are going to remain on the employ of Nigerian railway till kingdom comes. I don't think we have entered, have we entered into such arrangement? No. So if there is no arrangement like that, every employee reserves the discretion to get engaged in a service as he or she is employed and reserves the discretion as well to disengage. And here, it is not on individual basis. We have tested ground. We have, we have unanimously you know, agreed that we are not prepared to be transferred seamlessly as workers to a new owner. And we have explained our fears because when the private investor comes, private fund is exclusively mobilized for making profit. And for making profit, you are going to prune down your, your spending. And part of the major areas you are going to prune down is the workforce. And because we don't want to get to the middle of the sea and get, you know, washed away, that would be very, very, very irrational of us. And that is why we are saying, in order not to run into the reality of the unknown, we want to get disengaged. Give us as severance by, you know, benefits and let us go. If you want to do business, railway business, of course, it is still allowed. And the Nigerian labor market is so rich, is so, is so blessed with a lot of waiting Nigerians to pick job here and there. So if I am paid and I leave the employ of Nigerian Railway, of course I'm not going to die. I'm still going to leave. I'm going to leave. And that is why I said there isn't anywhere it is written that the present caliber of workers we have on the payroll of Nigerian Railway has signed to an iron cast an irreversible you know, uh, agreement that they are going to die on the job. The undertone of the stakeholders of various sectors that have been involved in concessioning or privatization seems to be that there's an urgent need for the legal framework to be not just put in place, but also implemented in all cases. And the activation of the National Council on Privatization is the first step. So once again, following the rule of law would allay fears, bring stability and even attract more investors into Nigeria. Well, that's our package for this episode of Big Story. Let's meet on our social media platforms before next week. I'm Amy Thompson.